Welcome back. Today's episode is gonna take a slightly futuristic angle. This is a huge blockbuster at the moment, probably the biggest film out there based on its hugely successful book called Dune. And when we look as designers to sci-fi movies, we see a lot of inspiration, a lot of hope, sometimes a negative slant, sometimes a positive slant, but it's always interesting to generate new enthusiasm, new ideas, new thoughts about what can come or what might come. It's interesting to see what these designers come up with when they're not constrained to what we realize today are the laws of physics. Let's get into watching some of the scenes in this film and I want to go through, not based on technical reasons or laws of physics, as I said, but just purely on design, how do they go about making this film such a futuristic vision of what potentially could be coming in the year 10,000. Now what I'm going to do first is look at the clip and then give my feedback. I haven't seen these clips before, but let's have a look at the first clip. So as you can see, this is kind of like today what a B-2 stealth bomber might look like in the future. It's kind of the uh, delta wing profile when you look at it from the top. It's got that kind of silhouette, triangular in shape albeit this thing is absolutely mind-blowing in the sense that it's got some kind of levitation going on where you can actually control it without moving too many of the uh, surface panels of it. Nothing really seems to move on this ship at all except the, uh, the movement of it by itself in the air. It's got lots of planar components to it, so there's air flowing through it. And it looks absolutely massive. The speed for something like this is incredible. The way it comes in, barely skims off the water and then gently gliding in. I mean, this thing, to be in the presence of this thing is unimaginable today. It's close to them, so the sound levels must be fairly reduced. I mean, something like this, you would imagine that size would be pretty imposing in terms of its overall presence. It's coming, it's arriving, it's landing. You would imagine just a a huge amount of, of, of activity, of buzz around it, but instead it's quite calm. This is quite in contrast to the vehicle itself. It looks very military-esque, almost aggressive. Whenever you design something with a triangle to it, typically that denotes danger or warning. That's just the international symbol we use for that. So what's interesting about the actual design, also from a front view, as you see it gliding in underneath that half dome tunnel almost, coming into its landing area, is it has a symmetrical wing on the top, a symmetrical or almost uh, a reversed uh, wing underneath it, and then in the middle it has this section which is probably where all the controls and uh, uh, passengers and soldiers or military are on board there. Um, a very clean shape, uh, nothing is moving on it except for obviously when it lands it sends out the landing gears, which aren't really even landing gears, almost look like industrial units of uh, uh, under some kind of hydraulic actuations. You know, I wish I was on the level of thinking of whoever designed something like this because I just can't imagine it, how this would physically work. But in a film like science fiction, there are no limits like this. You can do anything. And the fact is that anything that we've ever designed in the past, you could almost say 50 years before would have seemed impossible to actually make it work. It's almost majestic, it's hovering, it's got some kind of nobility to it, some kind of calm, confident presence. The way it lands gently like that. The other interesting thing is that when you see it land, such an enormous opening for one person to get off, this, this ship must have some other reason for being. There must be space inside dedicated to something completely other than just transporting somebody along. So yeah, I mean, it belongs in a science fiction movie, of course, because we can't imagine it being something uh, that would actually do what it looks like it's doing here. But the beauty of design is that it can work. We are the crazy people thinking of these ideas. 
the engineers, the great engineers that are behind it, can make something like this work. There's always a way. And again, I've always thought that anything that seems impossible is actually doable. It's just, we haven't found out how to do it yet, but we will be able to eventually. If the last one was impressive for its absence of any kind of turbulence or extremely low noise levels, this one goes to the other extreme. It's called the Ornithopter. You can see it immediately. This has some kind of what we call biomimicry going on. Not that they're on Earth and they've tried to copy anything, but if there is something designed to look like a dragonfly and mimic a dragonfly, this is it, which in itself is almost one of the most impossible uh, things to understand when they fly, how they maneuver so, so incredibly well. So this ornithopter, at least in my viewpoint, my present day viewpoint, first of all, the proportions, like I said, are quite similar to those of a dragonfly in the way it just even stands on the terrain and then takes off, glides up vertically but you can see that oscillation of the blades. First of all, how they actually come out. The first thing you think of is feathers. Even in the shape of those blades, you can start to see how they are influenced by nature, by feathers. There's a lot of feathers out there on different types of birds that have that kind of uh, construction, that kind of uh, ratio of, of length and width. That in itself is showing you that they're thinking of what works, in other words, this is not something that looks like it's absolutely impossible with today's technology to fly, which might mean that in the year 10,000, this probably is an antiquated way of flying. So it wouldn't surprise me if this is one of those spaceships in the film that is probably a little bit behind the times, but it is sort of a mechanical feeling object. But apart from all of that, I think it looks cool. I would certainly like to see something like this in my lifetime, but it looks like we're gonna have to wait about 8,000 years before one of these comes along. Something like this is absolutely stunning. You can see that they do have a few constraints in the glass, the cockpit area. The glass seems to be generally limited to how much they can actually uh, uh, form it out of one piece. Maybe we can do that today. Why wouldn't they be able to do it then? You want to have something that basically has as few blind spots or restrictions to your vision angles. In addition, talking about the sound that this vehicle makes, this ornithopter, we have to probably understand that a vehicle that big is going to have to make some type of, of wind noise. If it's generating resistance uh, and creating lift through beating or fluttering as it does there, you can imagine uh, a bee, a fly, a mosquito, whatever, we can still hear them as small as they are. Obviously, when you scale it up to this size here, there's going to be necessarily some type of sound effect. So I wish there would be some type of sound dampening system that they would have brought in here and allowed it to be absolutely silent. You can imagine if it was that big and it wasn't making a sound, how impressive would that be? As much as I love it, I, I, I appreciate it, I wish I had a model of it or, or whatever, but I don't think it's fitting of, of the year that this film is set in. And now I'm gonna look at this third clip. This one I've heard is different. So let's see what it is. This is the kind of ships I like to see because these are types of spaceships that you would immediately identify as an UFO on a grand, uh, grandiose scale. There are no apparent thrusters or anything coming out to support this as it comes down. That is unbelievably cool for me. A little bit on the incomprehensible side of how it does it, but the fact that they're showing it here with whatever effects that it does does it is, is, is what a film like this for me should be all about. I cannot understand obviously why it's shaped like that. It might be an efficient shape for its purpose, which means it's probably needed to carry a lot of things inside. Still, as I watch it come in, it's pretty spectacular from the sky down. You've seen this thing come slowly down. Uh, gently, there's no obvious way of how it's slowing itself down. And maybe the, the landing gear, the feet, as they come out is one of the, are one of the factors of it that seem to age a little bit. They seem almost built in an industrial environment, not 
really connected to the vehicle itself. The way they come out is interesting. I mean, the, the hatch is flush, everything, and you're not knowing what's actually gonna come out. But when you have that scene where the landing gears, the feet do exit the craft, are these feet actually belonging to the craft that is so flush, so simply shaped. These are like industrial units coming out. The spacecraft itself is fascinating. It doesn't look like it's made for war. It looks more like it has a friendly purpose to it almost. It doesn't look aggressive. And for that reason, I think it's probably not meant for battle, even defense or anything like that. It's probably just a transport vehicle. My instinct, my, my gut feeling <laughs> is that this is not a war vehicle, but something more that is used on sort of a diplomatic mission, diplomatic basis. And the other thing that I really like about it is the use of cut lines. Now this could be an extremely boring object if it was just an orb, but the use of cut lines, if you look around the vehicle as it's landing, it's where I got my first impression of it, you can see that it has a lot of potentially different functions to it. I don't know if it rotates or twists or anything like that, but you can see the cut lines denote functions and that's what we use cut lines for. I'm not sure who's coming out yet, but when it opens this big circular or semi-circular opening, I mean, something is gonna come out of here, either, either a lot of people, a lot of equipment, an army, something, I'm not sure. A real sense of arrival, the actual opening mechanism of it looks very, very ornamentated almost. It's got some kind of almost carpeting approach, very intricately laid out, almost geometric patterns coming down. So you know that the presence of whoever's or whatever's is coming down is going to be somebody of significance or something of significance. Again, three very, very different types of craft, and I think that each one has a distinctive function in this film. I can't wait to see it. I know it's a long one, but I'm gonna enjoy it. Again, we started with something that is quite aggressive in its general shape, but very efficient. I mean, very unchaotic almost in the way it actually maneuvers. It's gliding, it's gentle, it's almost got that sort of quiet, uh, confidence of, of, of a large object that needs or does not need to justify its, uh, its superiority. It is superior. The second one, the ornithopters, those are basically little killers, little, you know, stab wounds or something that basically just nips at you. They're, they're quite aggressive looking. I mean, my impression looking at that canopy on a dragonfly was of a snake head almost or a cobra head or on the body of a dragonfly. So there's a combination of very threatening, almost looking ships there with that kind of dynamic, almost look to it, proportions, very much like a high-speed helicopter. And then the final one, which seemed very friendly, almost threatless, not non-threatening in the terms of basically we're just here to, to, to transport or to deliver. And, and again, that came through with its very non-aggressive shape, that, that orb, that sphere. Very high tech, obviously, but combined, like I said, with something that is a little bit archaic, probably for that period. When the actual landing gears come out, they all look very industrial. There's not a lot of beauty to that. I think beauty is gonna be one of the things that we continually strive to add to our society. So three very distinctive spaceships that uh, are very interesting in the way they've been realized. And again, a lot of inspiration coming just from those three spaceships for me. I'm gonna bank them, keep them in my mind, and uh, hopefully one day I'll be able to use something like that in, as inspiration for perhaps another flying aircraft. So having said all that, let me know in the comments below what you think of the spacecraft in this film, what you think about the film in general. Do you like it? Do you not like it? It's our future coming. We are the designers of our future. We make it happen. What do you think the future should look like? And most importantly, stay tuned, stay watching. Thank you so much for being here and watching this episode. And I look forward to seeing you in the future.